<laughs> What's going on, guys? And welcome to United by Numbers, where we discuss the previous United game by Numbers. And um, it was Manchester United 2, Southampton 2 at Old Trafford. Um, big up to everyone that watched the live match reaction with me and Cams. Um, make sure you go and um, follow Cams on Twitter and Instagram. Also, big up Statman Bates for the numbers as usual. The link to his Instagram is in the description. All right, so we're going to go straight into the man of the match. Uh, my man of the match, Cams' man of the match, and the, um, the actual Premier League man of the match, which was Anthony Martial. Brilliant game. Um, it's a mad one because even now, when Martial's not scoring, you're starting to see the value of him as a footballer, innit? So it's amazing to see that people are starting to appreciate his link up play, the Benzema comparisons, and stuff like that. Obviously, I don't think that he's at Benzema's level yet in terms of consistency, but in terms of what his output is to the team, the kind of player he is. I think he's giving me them Benzema vibes, in it. You know what I'm saying? I've said it before, he, he reminds me of him, but until he does it um, for a full season, I think you're still going to get doubters. But one thing that you can't deny is that he's a special player, in it? He's a special player. His numbers, 94.4% pass accuracy, which is brilliant. Like, he just takes care of the ball, in it, very, very well. Um, 41 touches. Five out of six dribbles completed. Lost um, possession only 10 times in the whole game. Eight touches in the opposition box. One of them was obviously the touch he brought down from Pogba, laid it off to Rashford for the assist. Seven duels won, four shots, two on target, two clearances as well. Two out of two long balls completed. Two big chances created. One tackle, one goal, one assist. And what a goal that was as well. Switch positions with Rashford, cut inside from the left, wrapped it in the top corner. Especially after missing the first chance, his head didn't drop. He just put it in the top corner and you saw how much it meant to him, the celebration. You could see he was kind of frustrated that he missed the first chance. Um, proper winner, proper winner, great mentality. Head didn't drop after the missed chance. He atoned for it with a goal and an assist. And yeah, it's a beauty for the stat man. It was one of them games yesterday where had Martial not got the goal, a lot of people might have said, oh, look at the chance he missed and been pointing to that. But his all-around game was brilliant, isn't it? And I think there's been loads of times this season that Martial's all-around game has been brilliant. But because he hasn't scored a goal, a lot of people that like to overly rely on stats to tell them what's going on in the game haven't given him the credit he deserves. So I was very happy for him yesterday. Um, big up Martial. Martial and Rashford... We gave seven and eight yesterday, me and Cam. I was I was less impressed with Rashford yesterday. Um, it's, he's still dividing opinion at the moment, which is fine. I guess it depends on how how you like your football played. I know that Cam is a big fan of, fan of Rashford. Loads of people are saying that Rashford's changing his game to be more of a playmaker. And um, I personally think that's down to... Um, him recovering from the injury and him physically still not being a hundred percent confident in going past people. Some people just think that he's maturing and he's he's all around games developing. I'm I'm not too sure about that, but time will tell. When I'd love to be proven wrong because obviously I want to see him do um, very well. Pass accuracy sixty nine point two percent, not very good. Um, I think one thing we said, I've said about Martial. Like, he puts a lot of care on the ball, isn't it? The one thing about Anthony Martial, when he gives you the ball, he usually plays you the ball the correct way for you to either hit it first time or to do whatever. Like, if you look at the way he laid the ball off for Marcus, if I look at them as other players, I feel like sometimes Marcus almost hits the ball like he's shooting it. Like, sometimes he puts too much on the ball. And I think I saw a lot of that yesterday. I saw him coming inside... I just feel like passing and playmaking is not his natural game and you can tell in it because his pass accuracy is not very good for someone that doesn't really play many long passes and I, I feel like he overhits a lot of stuff do you know what i'm saying and that's not a criticism of 
him specifically. I just feel like his game, his attributes aren't tailor-made to being a playmaker. He does get assists, but I, I think that he lacks the delicacy of, of a touch in it. 55 touches, 17 times um, dispossessed. So it, it's still a decent amount, to be completely honest. Like 17 is not the end of the world, isn't it? Like he's trying to create things. Six touches in the opposition box, six duels one, three shots, one on target, 100% dribbles completed, two out of two, two fouls one, one cross completed, one one big chance missed, and one goal. The chance that Martial laid down for him, I think if, if Rashford is more positive and he goes through the ball, he scores, in it? I think he kind of saw the defender, hesitated, kind of pulled out. Again, I could be overthinking things, Maybe his injury isn't to do with the way he played, or maybe he's still playing a bit scared, and that's why he pulled out. I tend to think that he's still playing within himself slightly, in it. There was an opportunity where he's not made water Peters and that beautiful lady off. I think that was in the build up to the same move. And I could see him kind of pulling out. You know what I mean? And I feel like if he doesn't pull out, he scores that goal. So overall, I could say that's probably the best performance I've seen Marcus put in post post lockdown in terms of his potency is direct his directness do you know what i mean my my only criticism of him is like the end product in it that's always been one of my only criticisms of him um it is improving i'd like to think and hopefully it is in it but it's nice to see him getting his head up and trying to play people in just needs to put a bit more care on his passes bro and and yeah man we've seen a real improvement from him but him and martial that partnership, considering the midfield were poor yesterday, um, we didn't give any of the midfield above a five yesterday. So that tells you that they didn't have very much to feed off in it. So Rashford and Martial created the best chances in the game for each other, in it. So you have to respect it. Next up, Bruno Fernandes, who we gave a four. Very, he was poor again. It's not the first time I've seen him this poor, to be fair. Um, I think I've come to accept that this is just how he plays, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? I don't think any Manchester United fan can really say that they watched Bruno play for 90-minute games week in, week out in Portugal. We didn't. I mean, a lot of time, like, if it was a big game, we'd watch Bruno. And also, I never had the statistics, and a lot of the time it was highlights, isn't it? 73.7% passing accuracy. There were rumours saying that United didn't sign him initially because he his ball retention wasn't very good. Um, and this 73% is kind of, it's around the average in what he's getting in games, really. Do you know what I mean? Like early 70s and that, which I don't know. If we're playing well and we've got a solid base behind us, it's not a problem. You know what I But yesterday against a very well-organised Southampton team, a team that kept the ball well and pressed well, it, it was a hindrance. I'm not going to lie. When I said that I would have taken Bruno off before I took off Pogba or Matic, um, once I show you the average positioning of the players and their numbers, um, then you'll see my reasoning. Bearing in mind, I didn't even have these numbers yesterday. 53 touches. So very, very involved. Nine, 19 out of 25 final third passes complete. 17 times um, loss of possession. 100% dribbles completed, one of one, two chances created, two touches in the opposition box, two fouls, one, one assist. Um, he got the assist for passing the ball to, to, to Martial. For me, that ain't an assist, in it? Like, obviously, it will go down as an assist, but if you pass the ball to someone and they, they dribble past players, it's not an assist anymore. Um, this was a conversation me and Cam were also having. I think that assist should be when you pass someone the ball and then they're through on goal, in it? Or the next thing in front of them is the goalkeeper. When you're passing someone a ball and they've still got players to beat, I think that they've still got loads to do. But yeah, that's that's neither here nor there. If you look at Bruno Fernandes yesterday, um, the numbers aren't very good, in it? And let me pull up the average positioning as well, because we're going to go into Paul Pogba next. We'll get that average positioning up. Bruno Fernandes' average position here yeah, was ahead of Anthony Martial. He was almost our furthest forward, um, furthest forward attacking player. Martial was dropping deep, linking the play. 
Bruno was very high up the pitch. Um, no defensive duty whatsoever. Loads of the ball in the attacking third. And to be that close to the goal and just constantly giving the ball away, it, it was a problem for us. Um, we're going to go into Paul Pogba now. And I'll show you how this all interlinks. If you look at Matic's average position now, it's in between the two centre-backs. Another thing that um, myself and Cam discussed in the post-match. Also, some of the people in the, um, in the comments, they noticed it and they understood it. Matic was very deep. You look at the average positions, Pogba's playing in central midfield by himself. By himself. Do you know what I mean? So as much as people were saying, oh, you guys are like making excuses for Pogba, yeah, he was rubbish and that. He was playing in a central midfield position all by himself and he got overran. He looked tired anyway. Matic looked like he was playing as a third centre-back and Bruno was playing as a centre-forward. There's Those are the pictures. These are not opinions. These are facts, isn't it? These, these things happen. Bruno's playing further forward than Martial and Matic is playing as a centre-back in a back three. So Pogba was playing box to box on his own and he got overran. Here are the numbers. 63 minutes played for Pogba, 80% pass accuracy. So still a decent amount that I would want to keep him on the pitch if we're getting overrun in a game. Because um, as, we've come, as we've previously said, if you have the ball, you can't concede, innit? When you've got a player that's giving away the ball and has a pass accuracy of 73%, if I'm trying to take pressure off my team, I'm leaving him, I'm leaving the 80% player on and I'm taking the 73% player off because I need someone to keep the ball. 50, 50 touches, 16 times possession lost, 7 out of 8 final third passes complete, 5 out of 7 long balls completed, 7 ball recoveries. So at least he was winning the ball back even though, again, he wasn't playing well. One shot on target, three out of nine ground jewels won, 100% aerial jewels won, two key passes, both the goals, um, he, he paid a um, pivotal roll in, two out of three dribbles completed, but one error leading to goals. And because, he, because of the mistake he made leading up to the goal, that's all people can think about when um, judging his performance. And that's what happens in football because it was a crucial moment. But let's make no mistake about it. He wasn't the worst midfielder on the pitch yesterday. He wasn't. Do you know what I mean? So when people are saying, oh, you guys are being too lenient with him and this, that, and the other, I don't think we were. Do you know what I mean? We gave him a five. We gave everyone else a four because he was instrumental in the two goals. And as you can see from the statistics, he won the ball back more than anyone else. And his pass accuracy was better than um, Bruno's and it wasn't far off the Manu Matic's who played with little to no pressure because he basically played as a centre-half. So it's one of them things where obviously it comes down to how you're interpreting, interpreting the game while you're watching it. But the numbers seem to suggest yeah, that his game wasn't as bad. It wasn't as bad. Matic versus Southampton, 82% pass accuracy, so slightly better than Pogba's. Again, look at the average positions. He's playing as a centre-half pretty much. So he hasn't got the same amount of pressure running. His pass accuracy should be a lot higher. A lot higher, man. No pressure he's played under. And I read something um, on Instagram, and this guy hit the nail on the head. A confident match is a dangerous match. Because you see where match is confident? He's got this thing about him where he's just complacent, guys. Very complacent. Wants to dribble out from the back. You know what I mean? Gets caught on it, like overplays. Do you know what I mean? I like Matic when he comes in and he's hungry, yeah, and he's not guaranteed a place in the team. Um, I think I've expressed my reservations about him as a 25 game a season um, player. I don't know. I don't know now. I really don't know if we can go on a title charge next season with Matic as our main um, defensive midfielder. I don't think he has the legs. And also, I don't think he has the mentality anymore, man. Like, he just gets stupid complacent and he's a very, I don't know, he's just very sloppy of late. Do you know what I mean? He gave us about three or four solid games and now he's starting to look like he kind of knows the shirt's his and 
I don't know. I don't like the look of it. Nine out of 16 um, ground jewels, 177 touches. So that's 27 more touches than Pogba and 24 more touches than Bruno. So he was on the ball more than them, a lot more than them. But he was playing at centre-back pretty much. So he's getting on the ball and then passing the ball into no man's land pretty much, which is unfortunate. Only won one of his four aerial duels, like myself and Cam are also expressing from set pieces. We don't have any authority in the air, really. Matic is six foot three, offers nothing in the air, nothing at all. Four out of seven long balls competed. 13 times he lost possession. And losing the ball 13 times when you're playing in a centre-back role, pretty much, is dangerous. It's very dangerous. It invites a lot of pressure on us. Only won five tackles in the game. Four fouls won. Four times he was dribbled past. Again, you have to bear in mind how deep he was playing. Three clearances, two interceptions, one shot blocked. Numbers aren't too great. They're not too great. And it's not the first time we've been saying that Matic hasn't really been playing well. So the midfield as a unit was poor yesterday. Do you know what I'm saying? Like Bruno had one of the games that we know that he can have. Do you know what I mean? It was a similar one against Norwich. Um, Pogba, this is the worst game that he's had since he's come back. Very much off the pace. Do you know what I'm saying? The difference with Pogba and Bruno is we kind of know even when they're not playing that we can kind of leave the door open for them to produce a bit of a bit of magic or something special. With players like Matic, if he's not having a good day, he just don't offer nothing. Do you know what I'm saying? We can't rely on Matic for, to change the game if he's not playing well. We can rely on Bruno or Pogba to kind of pull something out out their locker, even when they're not doing well. That's the benefit of having genuine world-class players, isn't it? So, I don't know. The midfield... The midfield pretty much lost us the game yesterday. When when you look at the numbers and you look at the performances, they don't lie in it. Like they were our worst players on the pitch. Now we've got our two comparisons of full, the full backs. We've got Wamba Saka versus Luke Shaw. And then we've got Lindelof versus Maguire. 67 to no 73 to 67 in favor of Wamba Saka. More touches than Luke Shaw, but Luke Shaw. Wins um, pass accuracy by 3%, 83 to 80. Ground jewels won, 4 out of 4 for Luke Shaw, 7 out of 12 for Wamba Saka. So Luke Shaw's got 100%, he wins there. Again, Luke Shaw got a 7 from us yesterday. Um, Wamba Saka got a 6, if I remember correctly. We gave Luke Shaw um, a higher number because I think that overall, he just looked more... He looked more threatening. Even though Wemba Saka had a goal involvement and Luke Shaw didn't, I just think that Luke Shaw looked a bit more... a li bit more deliberate in his movement and just a bit more assured, in it? And the funny thing is with Luke Shaw, like, like I've been asked and I've said previously, I've never ever thought that it's a lack of technical ability with him. I just think that mentally he's shackled, in it? I feel like he's, he's being held back by something. It's good to see him actually getting further forward at the pitch. Even though his productivity is not there yet, at least he's getting in the right position. Yeah, it is the bare minimum, but we haven't been getting the bare minimum from him throughout his career. Um, Statman Baines also has a stat of Luke Shaw um, for Southampton versus Luke Shaw for Manchester United. And if you see the differences between the player we signed and the player we're getting right now, it's massive, isn't it? So as soon as I get those numbers... I'll fling these up for you as well. But yesterday, I think that's the best I've seen him play. Well, that's the best I can remember seeing him play, to be honest, even though he didn't um, get a goal involvement. Um, definitely the best football I've seen him play post-lockdown and unlucky to get injured. Hopefully, um, it's not a serious injury and he's back for the next game. Aerial Jules won. One out of two for Wamba Saka. Zero out of one. No, one out of, no, none out of one, yeah for um, Luke Shaw. So wan -Bissaka wins in the air there. Possession lost, 14 for wan -Bissaka, 11 for Luke Shaw. wan -Bissaka won two fouls, Luke Shaw did only won one. wan -Bissaka won three tackles, Luke Shaw only won one. Dribbles completed, 50% for wan 100% for Luke Shaw. So two out of two for Luke Shaw, two out of four for wan -Bissaka. So 
as you can see from the numbers, it's a weird one. Um, Wan Bissaka did more defending than Luke Shaw. Um, Luke Shaw done more attacking than Wan Bissaka. And yeah, it's just a weird one. Do you know what I mean? The numbers don't specifically say that he had a much better game than Wan Bissaka, but we watched it in it, and I just felt like. If anyone looked like they were going to be involved in something, it was Luke Shaw other than Wan Bissaka, even though he was involved in the little dribble down the right hand side. Other than that, I can't remember him doing too much going forward. Whereas Luke Shaw, he was always there or thereabouts, even if he didn't do anything. You know, sometimes, yeah, it's it's perception, in it? It's what it looks like someone's doing. Now, for me, I'm just happy that it looks like Luke Shaw's getting forward and he wants to be involved, in it? Even though the end product's not there at the moment, we put in a very good ball for Marcus Rashford. What Rashford was offside from, we probably didn't need to be offside. But I'm just very happy that Luke Shaw's getting forward now. You know what I mean? That, that's all I've ever wanted from him. So hopefully it's not just a rush of blood and he's going to be playing like this going forward. If Luke Shaw's going to be going forward um, every game now and this is how he's going to play, that I mean, then I'm excited to see what player he can become because it looks like I'm seeing him turn do like the things I want him to do, but turn into a proper left back slowly, in it. And for someone that's been at the club for six years and just turned 25, do you know what I mean? It's like, how much time do you give someone to turn into a proper left back? But I feel like from the last two, was it two games or three games, I've been pretty happy with him. Do you know what I mean? I've been pretty happy with him. So we'll have to see how he develops going forward. Hopefully it's not a long-term injury or a serious injury that's going to set him back in the game. So yeah, I have to give man respect for yesterday's performance. He was the, one of the... Him, Martial, and Rashford are the only players that got above a seven from us yesterday. Last but not least, Lindelof versus Maguire. Um, I wasn't impressed with Harry Maguire yesterday. I haven't really been impressed with Harry Maguire since he's come. Um, it's not an agenda. I just don't think that he's worth the money we paid it for him. I feel like buying Harry Maguire just made me realise we need another centre-back again. Do you know what I mean? Um, he lacks pace. Um, I don't think he's a natural leader. I think that he invites pressure on the defence because he holds onto the ball way too long. And yeah, like, I saw a still as well of the goal we conceded and Harry Maguire was marking wan bro. I don't know what happened there. I, I, I pray that the still is just like... It's a coincidence that someone's picked it to try and pick holes in us, but it don't look good, in it? I don't know what Harry was doing on the corner. I haven't seen the video back, but it doesn't look good, in it? And I just feel like he just... I don't think he's good enough ability-wise to command the respect as a captain, and I don't think organisationally he's good enough either, in it? I just think that he's a very mediocre centre-half. I really do. Um, I think, apart from the physicality, I don't see much difference in ability between him and Lindelof. I genuinely don't. I think Lindelof's just a soft version of Harry Maguire without the aerial presence, really, because he's more athletic than Harry Maguire. Lindelof reads the ball, reads the game very well. Yesterday, he made some very good interceptions. I was happy enough with him. Um, people are faulting him for the goal and stuff. I think it's a bit harsh, but we just know that he doesn't have the physical attributes. Pass accuracy, Lindelof is 78, Harry Maguire 81. Lindelof had more touches, 76 to 72. Lost position, lost possession, 14 to 12 in favour of Lindelof. So again, very little between them there. Clearance is six for Lindelof, four for Harry Maguire. Interceptions, three for Lindelof, two for Harry Maguire. Lindelof, one tackle, none for Maguire. Lindelof dribbled past zero. Um, Maguire dribbled past one. Ground jewels one, two out of three for Lindelof was one. Harry Maguire didn't win any ground jewels, um, ground jewels yesterday. Aerial jewels, Lindelof actually won four out of five. And Harry Maguire won one out of two. And that's Harry Maguire that's known for his aerial and his physical presence. And Lindelof won more jewels than him and aerial um, jewels than him. So it's one of them ones where in a game where your back's to the wall and you expect your big character your your captain your commanding center back to command i don't think he did that yesterday and the, and the numbers seem to agree with that um i don't know i'm in a i'm in a strange place right now because it's like everything i don't like about lindelof is down to physicality in it 
But also, people used to say that they didn't think that Rio was physical enough and he wasn't good enough in the air and stuff, but he was good on the ground. Even though Rio was he was a good athlete, do you know what I'm saying? But he wasn't as physical as your Nemanja Vidic's, your John Terry's. And that always used to be the question mark, that at the time, people used to level about him. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, he wasn't roughing people up. But he had a partner next to him that had that physicality. Do you know what I'm saying? And also, Vidic had a turn of pace. Harry Maguire is very slow. He's very slow. So it's like Lindelof and Maguire both don't, don't, um, they don't suit each other. I feel like a more athletic, um, more combative centre back here would suit both of them. Because right now, when I'm looking at them two play, the only thing that Harry Maguire is shading him is physicality, aerial. In terms of positioning, recovery and that Lindelof's probably better than him Lindelof's quicker than him and I, and I see how Lindelof reads the game do you know what I mean Lindelof's always the easy scapegoat um when we're not doing well do you know what I'm saying he's always the easy scapegoat because Harry Maguire is the captain he costs more money so it's easier to blame Lindelof but literally yesterday and a few other games I think Lindelof's been better than him he's been better than him and the numbers actually agree with that so it's a hard one isn't it it's a very hard one. I think that one thing's for sure is if Eric Bailly is not going to stay fit and get a run of games, we need to invest in the centre-back, guys. Big up for watching. Smash the like button. Remember to go follow Statman Baines. Um, let me know if there are any statistics here that surprised you throughout the game or if there were any things that you noticed positionally, etc. And just your general opinion on the game, guys. Obviously, our general opinion was on the match review. I think that the better drilled team won. I think the better coach, we saw who it was yesterday. We saw a good um, a good bunch of players against a good team. The better team won, even though it was a draw. Like the better team won the football battle, wasn't it? I think that this game feels like a defeat because we got outplayed at home for the majority of the time. Um, yeah, I just think Oli got out coached, which is fine. We know the kind of manager we have now. We need to we need to back Oli by assigning the right players because um, in terms of a system and a way of playing that isn't affected by one or two changes, we simply don't have it. We need reinforcements. I am genuinely concerned that if we have to make changes um, because of the cup competitions and the games we have left, that we could end up losing a bit of momentum which I don't want. I don't think anyone wants. So, fingers crossed, guys. Um, we can pick it up against Crystal Palace, get the three points, and then there'll be another United by numbers after that game. Peace. <laughs>